Nice to be here, man. Living over in Los Angeles. I uh been doing comedy for about six years. So I'm going through airport security. It's like 5:30 in the morning. Uh, there's this hungover kid in front of me. Uh, and we're going through, and Jimmy Walker goes walking by, and I don't say anything because I'm an adult. I just stare really hard at him. <laughs> love Los Angeles, man. I love LA, dude. I think it's a great place. Yeah, it's a good place, dude. But I like best is the celebrities. You know, you get to see a lot of celebrities. Like uh, the other day, I saw Britney Spears. You know, she's hot, you know. But I don't get is her husband. Though. Have you seen this guy? K Fed, you know, like he's a badass, but he's a dancer. <laughs> Same. Today's a different kind of day for Theo. Like about the past month, I've seen like I'm in limbo, kind of like I'm like I'm between like lives, kind of like part ghost, part human. He was on NBC's last comic standing, and now he's traveling nationwide performing his stand-up comedy. Please welcome the very funny Theo Vaughn. How's Huntington treat you more importantly? Huntington, Huntington has been good. Uh, I did discern it's a fat town. Uh, I didn't know that, and I'm not judging, you know? I mean, I'll be fat one day. Yeah, man, I'm from the South. Anybody else from the South? <laughs> Heck yeah. Second place in the Civil War. <laughs> Runner up. So, I grew up in my neighborhood. We didn't have a lot of diversity in my neighborhood. Diversity is always people's talking about it. And we didn't have it, you know. My neighborhood was poor black, poor white. That was our neighborhood, you know. And my poor black friends would always be like, man, look what you did to us. And I'm like, dude, do you think I would do all that shit to y'all and then move right next door, bro? <laughs> Now, we gonna split this plum or not, dog? How did Theo Vaughn go from a TV personality to one of the most recognizable stand-up comedians in this generation? Theo Vaughn. Theo Vaughn! Theo Vaughn, ladies and gentlemen, the great and original. The amazing American comedian Theo Vaughn. Welcome Bro, to Trigonometry. You guys have... We call it autism. <laughs> <laughs> to answer that question, we have to take a look at the history of Theo Vaughn. Theodore Capitani Van Kernentowski, known professionally as Theo Vaughn, was born March 19th, 1980 in Covington, Louisiana. Vaughn was born to Gina Capitani and Roland Theodore Achilles Von Kernentowski, who was originally from Bluefields, Nicaragua. Vaughn's father was 69 years old when Theo Vaughn was born, but Theo rounds it up to 70 for his comedic material. Sadly, Theo Vaughn's dad died when Theo was 16 due to cancer. Vaughn grew up in Covington, Louisiana with his older brother and two younger sisters. Vaughn graduated from Mandeville High School in Mandeville, Louisiana. He attended Louisiana State University for a time, as well as La Jolla University in New Orleans, University of Arizona, College of Charleston, and Santa Monica College. Vaughn received his undergraduate degree in 2011 from the University of New Orleans. Vaughn began a professional career in entertainment at age 19 when he starred in MTV's Road Rules Maximum Velocity Tour in 2000. Theo, he's 19, he's young, um, he probably hasn't been around a lot of people of color. What in the hell is Theo? That's what I think people think of me when they first talk to me, get to know me, they don't really understand me. Because I mean, a lot of times I don't even understand myself, you know. I'm surprised as other people are at some of the things that come into my head or some of the things that I think about. And, and, and at 19, if they were to ask me to do road rules, I, it would have changed my life. Yeah, I mean, I had no plans of going to comedy or being a comedian. I didn't have any, I was just walking across campus at college and I was just like really, really depressed and they had like auditions. And then next thing you know, I was, uh, they called me one day and they asked me to to go on this trip, you know? And I was like, oh, this is going to be really, really interesting. Throughout the years 2000 to 2008, Vaughn starred on The Real World and Road Rules, Battle of the Seasons, Battle of the Sexes 2, Fresh Meat, Last Comic Standing, and Reality Bites Back. At age 23, Vaughn decided to move to Los Angeles and pursue his dream of being a stand-up comedian. According to Vaughn, he had difficulty as an entertainer in Hollywood as talent agents would view him as a reality TV star 
and were skeptical about giving him work as a comedian. And then you would get out to like places and then there was always just like these dudes who would like come from other cities or whatever, who'd probably auditioned to be on these reality shows. Cause yeah. like, it was always those types of people I would see when I'd go into auditions and stuff. Right who had always kind of, I guess, made me feel negative about it. Right. Right. You know, so I don't know if sometimes the, the feelings came from me as much as they did, probably just from some weird lack of acceptance. Yeah. And back in Louisiana, people would like try to fight me at bars and guys would like, Jeez. I remember people throwing bottles at me and like, it just got crazy. And that's one of the reasons why I left Louisiana was because it got so uh, crazy. He has stated that it took years to shake this image as a reality TV star and establish himself as a comedian. Vaughn achieved one of his first comedic accomplishments a few years later in 2006 after he won the title of fan favorite on the online competition Last Comic Standing. It's interesting growing up with a father in his 70s because of the quality time that we would spend. Uh, shortly after I was born, my dad had one of his strokes, so, uh, so we were both learning to walk at the same time. <laughs> And we used to have little races for cookies, <laughs> soft batch, <laughs> and, and we would play games like catch or don't. <laughs> and my favorite is dad sleeping or is he no longer with us? <laughs> Your turn to hold the mirror under his nose. It's a real party. Got a defibrillator for Christmas one year. Six years old. That's a heavy gift play superheroes with my buddies are like, I'm Batman. You're like, I'm clear, man. <laughs> you girls will play house. We played assisted living center. You got to build a bunch of ramps. <laughs> Everybody eats at four in the afternoon and get out of hand. And the teacher at school will be like, well, Theo, eat all your vegetables. Don't you want to grow up big and strong like your daddy? <laughs> my dad can't turn his neck. In 2009, Vaughn popularized crank texting, which is sending a text message to random phone numbers to incite conversations. Okay, so about six months ago, I get a random text message on my phone from a phone number that I don't know, okay? It comes up, I don't know what it is, all right? And uh, it says, hey, it's Wanda, okay? So I write back, Wanda who? <laughs> and she writes, duh, Wanda, your cousin. Now, obviously, she has the wrong number, okay? But also, she has the wrong fucking person because I have tons of free time. <laughs> so I write back, what's up, shawty? <laughs> and for six months, she and I have been texting. She thinks I'm her uh, cousin, and I actually have a godnephew now named Damari who's going to be two years old in May. So it's kind of like a big time for our family. <laughs> But anyway, I'm like, this is so much fun just texting random people that um, I'm just gonna text every number in the world because I have unlimited text and I have total free time. So since then, I'm not joking, I've texted over 10,000 numbers on this phone right here. Um, I've gotten into relationships. Um, I've been a man, I've been a woman. I've started blood drives. I'm running religious groups all across the country. I'm doing an um, elementary school ROTC program right now in Seymour, Indiana. That's fucking blowing up, okay? Insane shit. And then I take the best ones and put them on a website. It's called Crank Text. So if you get a chance, check it out. Um, it's absolutely, it's fucking ridiculous. Um, I'm selling plywood right now to a guy. Uh, you would not believe. He thinks I'm in my apartment tripping on mushrooms right now. Um, and I've just been selling him plywood for two days. Anyway, so I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna read to you how this goes. So I write, hey, what's up? That's what I write to random numbers. I write, hey, what's up? This person writes, not much, sorry, new phone, who is this? It's a random number. I said, it's Barry, how you doing? <laughs> hey, I am good, how are you? I said, I'm great, got through the surgery, fine. He says, Barry, I don't want to be rude, but I'm very bad with names. I still can't remember you. I said, I forget things all the time. No biggie. I'm still in ICU, just kind of lonely. <laughs> he says, Barry, I think you have the wrong number, my friend. Who gave you this as my number? I said, I've had it in my phone. You should see the new leg, fucking technology. <laughs>
While doing this, Theo had started his crank texting blog, which was picked up as a column by College Humor a year later. On June 1st, 2012, Vaughn was the featured comedian in an episode of Comedy Central, The Half Hour, which is now known as Comedy Central Stand Up Presents. He also promoted his comedy on the Arsenio Hall Show, Comedy Central Stand Up Presents, Hello Ross, Chelsea Lately, Watch What Happens Live, At Midnight, This Is Not Happening, and other television shows. In 2016, Netflix released Vaughn's debut hour-long comedy special, No Offense. Fuck Denny's, bro. Fuck Denny's, man. I wish people would quit shooting up movie theaters and shoot up a fucking Denny's, okay? Because if you get gunned up at a Denny's, that's on you, playboy. Have some respect and take your family to IHOP like a real man. Denny's suck. Everything at Denny's tastes like eggs and onions. Everything. The show was taped at the Civic Theater in New Orleans, Louisiana. And in the summer of 2019, Vaughn embarked on a three-month national tour called the Dark Arts Tour. In April of 2011, Theo Vaughn had entered the world of podcasting and began his first podcast called The Comedy Sideshow. Taped at the Improv Comedy Club in Hollywood, Vaughn would interview comedians and other entertainers. The show only had 23 episodes. In 2015, Vaughn started a weekly podcast with filmmaker and journalist Matthew Cole Weiss called Allegedly with Theo Vaughn and Matthew Cole Weiss. The two totally opposite friends committed to see who has a better alleged tales of celebrities, trauma, dating, success, and failure from their years living in Hollywood. The podcast lasted three years and had a total of 123 episodes. Shortly after that podcast, Vaughn had started a solo podcast called This Past Weekend in 2016. This podcast featured Vaughn's storytelling, answering fan voicemails, and doing thoughtful guest interviews. In December of 2018, Vaughn and fellow comedian and podcaster Brendan Schwab started a new podcast called King and the Sting. At the podcast release, it debuted at number one on the iTunes podcast charts in the US and also reached the top charts in the United Kingdom, Canada, Spain, and Australia. And in January of 2022, Schwab and Vaughn added a third host, Chris Delia. But during this time, Vaughn began taking breaks from the podcast. On November 4th, 2022, King and the Sting was officially renamed to The Golden Hour, with Eric Griffin replacing Theo Vaughn. But Theo Vaughn started up this past weekend again and has been posting weekly podcast episodes to this day. It is no doubt that Theo Vaughn has experienced massive success not only in his stand-up comedy, but also in his social media presence and his podcasts. But Theo Vaughn has always been hardworking and funny, so why is it that just recently he has become a household name? I would text like nine numbers in a group, just random numbers, and I'd be like, dude, one time I was on this bus, man, I used to go work at this farm in the summer. And so I would take the, I feel like, yeah, when I was young, everybody was getting molested or oh, fucking. Shit. Shit. What's fucking us up more than anything? Well, war, murder, theft, the strong. But dude, it is crazy. I bet a lot of people that have deficiencies and stuff like that. What do you mean? You know, I was born with a rare body stop. The short answer is short form content. We have seen platforms like TikTok really popularize creators, celebrities, comedians, etc. We saw this with people like Andrew Tate. The more people that post about one person, the more audience that person reaches. Just like Andrew Tate, Theo Vaughn was shared everywhere. Thousands of short form videos of Theo Vaughn were being uploaded hourly. Every day, millions of people's attention were directed towards Theo Vaughn. Theo Vaughn's personal TikTok has just under 5 million Million followers, but there is also seven accounts on TikTok that all have well over 100,000 followers. Just over the last three months, Theo Vaughn has gained 300,000 subscribers on YouTube and just over 30 million views. Because of TikTok and other short form content platforms, Theo Vaughn was able to take over the internet. Not only was his audience just fans of his stand up, he was now gaining fans all over the world. 
from teenagers to adults. Another big reason why Theo Vaughn is in the position he's in is because of his network. It is no secret that Theo Vaughn has a lot of high status friends, including Joe Rogan, Bobby Lee, and other comedians. On Joe Rogan Experience number 1225 featuring Theo Vaughn, a podcast on YouTube got over 9 million views. On Theo Vaughn's This Past Weekend podcast featuring Joe Rogan, that podcast got over 12 million views. Not to mention the Spotify streams and the clips from the podcast that were uploaded separately. But this wasn't just random luck. Theo Vaughn has been working endlessly to make his way up in the comedy scene. And not to mention, he's funny as f you know, like, I love my dad. I'm grateful for him. But I've also always been a little bit angry at him. I didn't realize it. I was always angry because I didn't know him very well. You know, I was 16 when he passed away and he was 86. You know, I was angry because I didn't know him because he didn't know me. And then I, you know, I realized that I, I really kind of judged my father. Like, I didn't realize it. I always thought that so one of the reasons we didn't know each other very well was because, because of the age gap. I really started to think back more on it. And one of the reasons also we didn't know each other very well was because I really judged him. You know, I really judged him for being so old. You know, other kids Kids would make fun of him and then I kind of made fun of him and I think sometimes I didn't even try to get to know him even though I was young it wasn't my responsibility really it was it wasn't an ideal situation but I didn't really try to get to know him you know and I would have an, I would make the excuse well he shouldn't have had a kid when he was that old you know what was he thinking well that's true but if he doesn't have that I don't exist so there's some there's validity there to that argument but if I don't exist but he gave me my existence, whatever, however way it happened. You know, he really gave me the only important, the most important gift, which is uh, my experience of the world. And I judged him so much and kind of, that I didn't really get to know him. You know, there were times I, I, he probably thought sometimes, wow, maybe my son doesn't, he's not interested or he, I think maybe I was afraid to get to know him because I knew he was gonna pass away. So it was probably like safer to not get to know him, you know? But I remember I chose to joke around. I would always make, you know, cause other people started making fun of my dad because he was just so old, man. You know, and so I would make fun of him, you know, sometimes. Cause it's all I could do. It's the only thing I could do to kind of survive was to also make fun of him. But. But in doing that, I didn't really honor him. I didn't really honor my relationship with him that much. I didn't, and I'm not really blaming myself. I'm not coming down hard on myself. I just, I'm trying to get to a place where, uh, where when I think about fatherhood and I think about parenting, I'm trying to, you know, pick these locks that keep me from having a lot of emotions in those spaces. But I was really embarrassed to my father. You know, I hate to say this, man, I was embarrassed like, uh, you know, when we would walk somewhere, I would walk kind of far behind him or away from him. You know, because he was so old, I didn't, and he didn't notice that much because, you know, when you get old and this wasn't when I was a kid, when I was a kid, I was real doting on him. I was real caring. You know, I remember we would walk to church sometimes and I would, you know, I'd make sure that the leaves were off of the sidewalk and I would make sure that the. And that has been the mini documentary about Theo Vaughn. If you guys did enjoy, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe with post notifications on. And with that being said, I'm out.